everybody. Um, this is not going to be the easiest of videos to make, but I don't want this to be a sad video. So for those of you who are not on social media or who don't follow me on social media, you may not be aware of the really sad news that I'm about to share with you. But even if you are, I thought we, you all deserve a little more information. So on Monday, August 29th, we made the decision to put Bosley to sleep. Many of you know that he had been fighting cancer for just over two years. That fight was um, relatively symptom free and controlled by medication up until about the last month to six weeks. Um, and even to this day, we're not entirely sure if it was cancer or just really extreme old age that finally caught up at Bosley. But, <sighs> Things came to a head very quickly over the last couple of days of his life and he couldn't really walk anymore. He couldn't stand for any real length of time. Michael had to carry him in and out of the house to go to the bathroom and even just standing long enough to do that was difficult. It wasn't a life anymore. And the final straw was um, Sunday night and Monday he just wasn't eating. He a dog who lived to eat, who would wake us up for years at 5.17 on the dot every morning. Time to eat, time to eat, time to eat, like barking, pawing. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny now. Um, turn his head away from the food. We knew it was time. It was selfish of us to keep him any, around any longer. So it, we took him to the vet and we sat with him and we held him until he was gone. And I should be so lucky to go like he went. But I don't want this to be sad. The point of this video is I know so many of you loved him almost as much as we did. And so I wanted to share the happy stuff with you. I primarily want to do this because as much as the internet can be a horrible place, it could be used to promote hatred. It could be used to bully and demean people. In this case, it has been such a source of comfort for me and for my family. The outpouring of love, of comfort, of such kindness from really, I mean, as much as I joke that y'all are the best friends I've never met, you are really, for the most part, total strangers, um, that you took the time out of your busy lives from all over the world. I have heard from people on every continent my kids have read everything. Michael has read everything. Sometimes it was too much to read. The tears just would not stop flowing. But at the same time, it just meant so much to us. And I know for many of you, you're thinking he was just a dog. And I'm sorry for you that you will never understand what it means to be loved by a dog and to love a dog in return. But for those of you that get it, he was not just a dog. He was a person that had four legs and he was part of our family for almost 13 years. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about Bosley, the Weimaraner, and um, funny stories. And then I'm gonna end this with some of our favorite pictures of Bosley. They're not all of our pictures. They were just what was handy in my phone because I really don't have the strength to sit and go through all the old photo albums and dig through old pictures to get his early years. I'm not ready for that yet, but um, they're funny because Weimaraners are goofy. And Bosley was maybe one of the goofiest dogs that have ever lived. Um, Bosley was born January 23rd, 2003. We don't know entirely where. Bosley came into our life in January of 2004. We uh, had Rookie, a West Highland White Terrier, and we had our boys. Jake was, well, this is 2004. How old were the kids? Five and two? Yeah, five and two. And Michael thought it'd be a great idea to have a big dog for the kids, which really meant a big dog for him. Rookie was my baby. He was my shadow and he lived for me, but they wanted a dog for them. So we researched all the breeds out there and he wanted a big dog and a dog he could go running with, but he wanted a dog that really didn't shed or if it did that you couldn't really see the, the hair and that was cute. And somehow we ended up settling on a Weimaraner. Little did we know what we were getting ourselves into. Um, and we decided we wanted to do rescue this time. We bought Rookie through a breeder. This time we went rescue. 
So we found Bosley on the Wyme rescue page of the, what is the official name? It's the Wyme Rescue of North Texas. And I'm gonna put a link to them below. If anyone is interested in looking for an older Wyme runner, they don't have any puppies right now, but they do have some great older ones on there. Go check them out. Bosley's actually on there. We put a picture of him on their Gone But Not Forgotten page if you wanna see a picture of him there. Anyway, we traveled to Pearland, Texas, and we were interviewed and we introduced him to Rookie and at 11 months old, he's still considered a puppy and we were accepted and we brought him home. Well, we had no idea what we were in for. We thought we knew, but we had no idea. An 11 month old untrained Weimaraner is hell on wheels. They are crazy. It was overwhelming. There was a lot of property destruction and that went on for years. We trained him as best as we could. A lot of bad habits stuck around, but when you love a wine runner, you love them no matter what. And he did mellow out when he was about 10, nine, nine, I'd say. He mellowed a little bit. But um, some of our favorite Bosley stories, let's see. Okay, when Jake was in first grade, they asked us to take the class guinea pig home for the weekend. Probably should have thought maybe a hunting dog, even though he's not trained to hunt, it's inbred, doesn't mix well with small rodents. This was back in the day when the dogs were still allowed upstairs. We put the guinea pig in the guest room upstairs. Bosley spent the entire weekend trying to break down the door. I kid you not. So that was the first and last time we took home the guinea pig and I'm surprised it didn't die of fright because he almost succeeded in that task. I think there's still gouges in the door from him trying to knock it down. Bosley may have been inexpensive to adopt through rescue, but he was not inexpensive to own. My favorite example was when he tried to leap the length of our swimming pool, which was like 19 feet. That didn't work out so well. And he ripped open his leg, his back leg. You can't see my arm. It was like a gash like this. Michael, of course, was either working or traveling at the time. And I got a, a neighbor of ours who worked from home, um, her husband, to help me carry this, at that point, 90 pound dog who was bleeding everywhere into the car. Then what subsequently followed was a three hour surgery to put the dog back together. I don't even wanna tell you what that cost. And then, um, and then um, he had to be heavily sedated when he finally got home because he had to be completely quiet. We put him in our bathroom. We put a four foot high baby gate across the entrance to the bathroom so that he couldn't get out he jumped it on barbiturates. He jumped it. So we had to board him at the vet for 10 days until the stitches came out. And as soon as we brought him home, what did he do? He tried to jump over the pool again. He loved food a lot. So one time I had worked really hard on making this really awesome chicken dinner. And I pulled eight chicken breasts out of the oven and set them on the stove to cool. And then the doorbell rang and I rushed really quick to open the door. And when I came back, we had no dinner, but Bosley had had his and then some. That dog. He would let you know exactly when it was five o'clock because that was dinner time and he would not let you forget it. And as he got older, dinner time got earlier and earlier. And then it kind of like started at 3.30, he would start barking at you and then running to his food bowl and then running back. He could tell time. We started putting the gate at the bottom of the stairs. One of the reasons was because Bosley really liked stuffed animals. And when the boys were younger, they had stuffed animals. Actually, they still have like girlfriends and stuff, give them stuffed animals. So they still have stuffed animals up there and Bosley would go upstairs and just keep bringing them downstairs. And then he would love them to death. Like he murdered, I can't tell you how many innocent stuffed animals. He would lick them and lick them and lick them and love on them until he shook their little heads and ripped their heads off and got their stuffing all over the house. So that was the end of that. Then he loved the bunnies. Oh, did Bosley love the bunnies. So one spring, a mother bunny had five baby bunnies that she placed in little nests all over our backyard. Now, if you have a weak stomach, you might wanna turn away from this for a little while. Bosley found the bunnies and I don't think he meant to rip their heads off. I really feel like he thought he was playing with them because he didn't eat them. But let's just say that bunnies do make noises when they are in extreme distress. 
And one of those instances ended up with me and a shovel chasing Bosley around the yard, screaming, drop it, drop it. It's very traumatic, oh, horrible. What can you do? He was a hunting dog. Bosley was one of the Weimaraners that never loved to swim. We tried putting him in the pool once and he stood on his hind legs and flailed around until we got him out. He did love to sit on the um, sun ledge and just soak. When it was hot outside, he just, he was a soaker. He just loved it. But actually getting him in the water, not so much. Bosley loved to dig though, really enjoyed digging. We used to joke we could have made a small fortune if we could teach him to dig where we wanted to place, like landscape things, because it's really hard to dig in the, in the ground here in South Texas. It's, it's packed pretty hard and then there's like, um, kind of almost like rock right under the surface. Bosley managed to dig a two foot hole in a less than five minutes and actually dig up a sapling the other day, the other day, one day. Um, he could find current under the ground and managed to find all of our landscape uh, lighting, wiring, our outdoor lighting, dig it all up, sever all the, all the wires, burned himself, like had scorch marks on his muzzle, never electrocuted himself. Not entirely sure how that happened. He ingested so many poisonous things. He ate um, two pounds of dark chocolate truffles. He ate two pounds of grapes, which are fatal, absolutely fatal to dogs. He ate an entire year's worth of heartworm in one sitting, and then the next morning ate an entire package of Hershey's Kisses and spit out all the wrappers. He ate so many bad things that at the emergency vet near our house, in his file it says, dog has history of eating things that are fatal but apparently not to Bosley. So he must have been born under a special star because this dog exceeded all expectations, outlived all medical expectations, and lived a very full and very adventurous life. And he will be missed. Um, he will be especially missed by me when it gets cold. He was my body pillow <laughs> in the winter, yes. The dog slept right in between Michael and I. In fact, the night we brought him home, his owner had trained, his foster owner had trained him to sleep on the floor next to them. But when we brought him home, he started to cry and Michael said, oh, he's sad, let's let him get in the bed with us. And this then maybe only 70 pound Weimaraner, because he was still hadn't gotten his adult weight yet, hopped in the bed, laid down in between us, and that was the beginning of up until he got old, like 12 years of the dog sleeping in between us. And I remember looking at Michael and saying, this might be sharing a little too much, but saying, this was not the birth control I signed up for. Um, but he was the best body pillow ever. Michael misses his best friend, that is for sure. Jake is, I know Jake is sad, but he's also very much distracted by all the fun and exciting things that are going on at Ole Miss and, um, and studying. Right, Jake? You're studying. Um, and he's been sending us a lot of YouTube videos about Weimaraners. Um, Shane's okay. Shane's, you know, he's 15 years old. I know he's sad, but they get over things pretty quickly. I think the one that's actually most affected is Wrigley. Wrigley misses his buddy a lot. Um, he's very sad. You can see that. And we are looking for Bosley 2.0. We have put ourselves on a list for a litter that's due in September and with a breeder. And if we're lucky and they have a male, we might be adding a new family member to our home come uh, late November. And we will keep you posted if that actually happens because we are crazy. Anyway, again, uh, the whole family really wants to thank all of you. Um, I know you don't always support everything I do and everything I say, but when push comes to shove, in the hard times, y'all are there for me. And I really cannot, words cannot express what that means to me. And we all truly thank you so much. We love you. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye.